Hi, welcome to Rocky Mountain Views. I'm your host, Martha Thompson. Today I'm sitting with two remarkable women who have written a book called Slow Parenting Teens. They're Molly Wingate and Marty Woodward. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks Our for having pleasure. us. This is one of the best books I've read in a long time. Oh, how f nice. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it is. It's great. Um, if you are a parent of a teenager and think you're doing everything right and things are still not going well, this is a book of absolute and complete hope. There are things that you can change. You do not need to change your kid to have a great relationship with them. And if you are a teenager watching this, we're going to help your folks out and everything's going to be okay. <laughs> so um, tell me about, uh, maybe if you'd start, Marty, tell me about there are five attitudes of slow parenting. Yes. But first of all, let's talk about what is slow parenting? What is meant by that? Sure. Uh, thank you. I would love to talk about this. Um, slow parenting is a parenting model that really talks about how to parent from acceptance and love and respect so that you have the most influence on your teen. What we know is that um, when teenagers hit you know, the 12, middle school, 12, 13 year old range, that peers become extremely important to them. And one of the reasons that peers become important is because they have the most acceptance and approval from their peers. Okay. So from, if you're slow parenting, what you're doing is you're parenting from a place of that same approval and acceptance so that you maintain a level of influence in your child's life as they move through adolescence and into early adulthood. Um, okay. So it really is about staying in a respectful, fun, enjoyable relationship so that you continue to have the influence in your teen's life rather than a gang or a boyfriend, girlfriend, or a, you know, right. some other influence that really is being more loving and more accepting to them than you are. And they get to come to the safest person. They get to come to the safest person. Um, it's also very much about being proactive in your relationship rather than reactive. And that's where the slow parenting, well, that's where the name comes from, is that um, in slow parenting you're being very proactive and very responsive. In fast parenting, you're being very reactive and you're tending to deal only with the situation in front of you rather than the long-term relationship. So we talk about slow and fast on a continuum. And in that continuum, it's really about moving more towards slow, not always doing it from a slow parenting um, perspective, right. but really being able to to look at your parenting and look at your teenager and see, measure your parenting from a place of the relationship rather than measuring your parenting by your child's behavior. So okay. you're not saying I'm a good parent because my kid got into this college or I'm a good parent because my, my teenager is a soccer star. Right. It's, though that's not how you're measuring your parenting. You're measuring your parenting by what's the relationship I have with them. Do they come to me when they need something? Do they feel safe with me? Do they trust me? Right. And so that's where you, you're sort of measuring how am I doing? It's not by how they're behaving. I get that. I do. Mm -hmm. There's, let me ask this of Molly. Now there's also, um, there's some criticism that can come to someone who is slow parenting. And the first person I think of is Dr. Phil, because I've heard him say a million times, you know, your kids have plenty of friends. They only have one parent. Stop trying to be their friend. And that can be something that would be leveled at someone who is slow parenting. Can you explain that to us, how that is not correct? You're well, still parenting. You're still parenting for sure. Friends are peers. Mm -hmm. Parents aren't peers. Mm -hmm. And you're not, uh, a slow parent is still a, a, a sounding board and may do many of the things they do with friends too. But a parent is the person who, um, you know, gives limits and, you know, consequences, natural or manufactured consequences. A parent is the person who, s who says, um, you know, that's not acceptable. And so as a slow parent, you don't, you know, quit parenting. Right. Um, but what you do is, is literally slow down and think about what you're going to do and what those consequences 
of your behavior are going to be. I mean, we talk a lot about, um, you know, parenting for the relationship, not for their behavior. But we also say the only person that you have any influence, you know, the only person you can change is yourself. And if you want to change the relationship, then it's you that's going to have to change. You change the way you parent. And so and that brings us to the five attitudes. And that brings us right to the five <laughs> attitudes okay. because they help you. They lay out a map for how do you change how you parent. Right. And they're kind of perspective changers. Huge perspective changers. They're a <laughs> blueprint. And yes. these are effective in all relationships. Yes. I love this stuff. <laughs> um, so so <laughs> do we. <laughs> I think it's really great. I think it's good. <laughs> There's no one that this isn't good for. And, right. and, but especially with a, a, teen, a relationship with a teenager, mm -hmm. which can feel tenuous at best at times, mm -hmm. this helps you find some terra firma. So t let's talk about, we've got a limited amount of time, let's talk about these five attitudes. Great. Okay. Uh, you want to start? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, we, I'll, name them all. It's steward your teen, respect their personality, catch them doing it right, listen, and parent every day. Okay. So that's the big five. But the first one is stewarding. And stewarding is taking care of. It's nurturing. It's like the steward of a forest would look around and say, what trees need to be trimmed? What trees need to be planted? What needs to be taken away? What needs to be added? So you look at your teen in terms, or any one, you know, depending, but you look at them and say, you know, what will help them grow? Instead of the opposite of stewarding is, is focusing on keeping them safe. When parents say, you know, my job as a parent is to, my primary job is to keep him safe. Well, that's a setup. It's compl it's impossible to keep somebody safe all the time. It is. It's a setup for the kid. It's a setup for the parent. When you think instead in terms of stewarding them, nurturing them, that's something you can do. Okay. And the w the way I like to think about it is remaining curious about your teen. No matter who or she is, no matter how she shows up, whatever, just go, wow, I wonder why you're doing that. Or, gosh, you know, that's an interesting idea. I never thought about that. <laughs> Instead of, are you out of your mind? You know, so the difference is to remain in a position of, um, of almost awe and say, you know, wow, what's going on with you? Mm -hmm. And it, sometimes that can come more naturally than others. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> <Okay>. absolutely. <laughs> and we're all human. And, <laughs> but, you know, instead of, uh, I mean, we'll get into this with the other attitudes as okay. well. But if, you know, my son walked in and had a ridiculous haircut in my view, uh -huh. um, I know that my eyes popped out of my head, but I could say, you know, take a breath, recognize some, you know, what's going on? All right, how about if I say, huh? That's an interesting choice. Tell me about why you did that. Okay. So the judgment's gone. Yes. Try. Well, I mean, <laughs> I know my face, right. you know, well, gave a lot of the judgment, but but, <laughs> but to <laughs> catch myself and go, wait a minute, I really am curious about why you made this choice. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, okay. I'm a little, fr you know, freaked out, but I'm also like, wow, why'd well, you do that? And what I love about that too is that, <laughs> you know, you're letting them be human. Yes. And they need to be, and they're going to make tons of mistakes, but so are their folks. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. You know, that doesn't, there is no perfect blueprint on how to parent. And even parents who are so dedicated to doing a great job are going to screw up mm -hmm. and be human. But if you're letting your kids be human, they're going to be a little bit easier at letting you be human too. Yes? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. There's yeah. a huge benefit to being a slow parent. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the stewardship. Stewarding. That's the that's first right. step. That's right. the gist What's of stewardship. The, right. What's the, the second step? So the second attitude is to respect their personalities. And the, the counter of that is to need to change them to be something usually more like you. Because right. we're comfortable with, you know, if I'm an extrovert, I'm comfortable with my child being an extrovert. If I'm, if I have a certain learning style, I'm comfortable with them having that learning style. Um, so respect their personality. We use personality in an extremely broad way. 
And so we mean everything from their preferences, their learning style, uh, are they introverted, are they extroverted? You know, there's a whole lot of things that go under personality. Um, their preferences, you know, are they, do they, are they outdoorsy or do they like video games? Okay. I mean, it really is a, a broad word that we're using. But the idea behind it is to first steward them so you know who they are, and then to really respect that and actually support them in who they are rather than needing them to be different. And that is just critical in, in terms of building a relationship with a teenager is that they have um, sensory apparatus that I don't think we have. <laughs> I think they do too. <laughs> that they really can tell when they are being manipulated or judged or, or, or the, the adult is trying to get them to a certain conclusion. Certainly, trying to mold them. Trying to mold back them. Back to the mini-me. Mini yes, absolutely. <laughs> so we, we ask parents and any significant adult in a teen's life, we keep talking parents, mm -hmm. but we, grandparents, teachers, coaches, youth ministers, you know, anyone that has a relationship with an adolescent, is to really know who they are, but then really allow them to be that. Okay. And to... Got that. Um, we were just talking earlier today about, you know, you know, one of my daughters really, really likes reality TV shows. Mm -hmm. And I don't particularly like reality TV shows, but I really like my daughter. Mm -hmm. So I will spend time with her in that particular activity, but I'm very careful not to put down reality TV shows. Because then, in, in essence, I'm putting her down. I get that. And okay. it doesn't seem, in the moment, it wouldn't feel like that to you, but it would to her. Yes. Yes. If I'm saying that the, that the show is X, Y, and Z, then in essence I'm saying she is as well. So when you're respecting a teenager's personality, you, you're really being very accepting of who they are, especially if who they are is different than you. And who they are changes from oh. sometimes hour to hour, <laughs> not just day to day. Yes. Which is the stewarding piece. Right. To stay curious. Okay. All right. So the next attitude. The next attitude is catch them doing it right, as opposed to catching them doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, pointing out what they do wrong or saying, you did a great job, honey, but... Da, 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 or, <laughs> wow, not I bad. <laughs> next time, let's, you know, as soon as you say that but, or next time, you negate any compliment you've ever given. And if you, it shuts kids down. Mm -hmm. They will quit listening mm -hmm. as soon as you start correcting. That's huge what you just said. That's huge. It, yes. And it's so well intentioned coming from the trusted adults, well, slash parents. I'm a former teacher. You okay. know, what we, how do you not teach? Well, nobody wants the answer to a question they haven't asked. Mm -hmm. Your job is to provoke the question. And so y you get, you know, we all know that you get more with honey than you do with vinegar. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay in relationship with your teenager, if you want to be the most influential person in their life, they have to be listening to you. Mm -hmm. And you have to catch them doing it right. You also have to have been paying enough attention to know what they were trying to do so you know when they did it right. You have to respect their personality enough to know that even though you might think what their their goal they're aiming for is like kind of odd, you get to catch them getting to their goal because mm -hmm. you've been paying enough attention. So all the um, attitudes build on each other. I see but, that. Uh, but catching them doing it right, I mean, all of these attitudes have a lot to them. You can unpack them for quite a long time. But the, fundamental, par <laughs> but the <laughs> fundamental part of it yeah. is to give up pointing out what they did wrong. They already know most of the time. Right. And mm -hmm. as soon as that voice comes on, they quit listening. So if you're going to genuinely measure the quality of your parenting by the quality of your relationship, anything you do that shuts the relationship down is not a good idea. Right. That's Build where the, the relationship up. So mm -hmm. catch them doing it right. Mm -hmm. And even if it's, um, you know, seemingly very small or very silly, I mean, certainly I have fallen in, you know, into giggles with my own kids going, oh, look, <laughs> you know, you don't have any zeros this semester. Nice work. <laughs> well, it is an accomplishment, frankly, but 
we all can laugh and whatever, but it is an accomplishment mm -hmm. and we are celebrating it. And it's so much more fun to celebrate. It is. That is. I love this. <laughs> the next attitude. <laughs> right. The next attitude is by far my favorite, and that is listen versus lecture. And the way we describe the difference is that lecturing is telling your story and listening is hearing theirs. Mm -hmm. And so many parents, good intention, just as with catch them doing it right, mm -hmm. um, very good intentions that they want their children to learn from their experiences and learn from their stories and not have to go through what I went through. And so they tell them their stories and solve their problems for them and do a lot of lecturing. And in reality, the, the, the way to build a relationship with a teenager is to learn to shut your mouth and open your ears and to really listen to them and to ask questions, only these questions. What else? Tell me more. Really? And that that opens up the door for them to um, speak as they need to about what they choose to share, which is very different than when a parent asks a lot of questions, which is leading the conversation. So even though you think you're showing your interest and your concern for your teen, what you're doing is you're leading them down a particular conversation. So we, we really recommend that you just let the silence be there and let the teenager fill the silence because once they realize you're not going to interrupt them and you're not going to lead the conversation and that you truly are, back to stewarding, curious mm -hmm. and back to respecting their personality, not going to judge them and back to catching them doing it right, you're listening for the things you can compliment them on, then they start to open up and it's, it's miraculous. Beautiful. Now we have, a, we have a caution, a slow parenting caution. Okay. If you do not want your teenager to actually open up to you, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> we're not kidding <laughs> no I get that this is what happens that this works mm -hmm. and so if you are if you don't really want to be in a relationship with your teenager of this level of intimacy then don't do this because it will work and they will start talking to you and they will share things that well they that will can be difficult for some parents and if you're not coming at this with a great deal of integrity, you can have something very difficult happen yes. to a teenager because that parent, if they're not operating on absolute integrity, will take all of that information gathered in listening and use it against them. Yes. And that's that destroys That everything. destroys the relationship. Yeah. Yes. yes. So I agree with you completely. That's beautiful. So the listening is paramount to having a, a, an effective, intimate, fun, respective, respectful relationship. I love that. Yep. Okay, one more. One more. The last one is parent every day. Okay, let's talk about that. How do we do that? Because we all have busy lives. There's stuff going on. You may have an intact nuclear family. You may have two parents of origin and two step parents, uh, all kinds of different. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? Well, we talk about it in terms of making the invitation. Okay. that you have the invitation out there to ha be in relationship, to have a conversation. Today, with all the electronic stuff that we've got going on, you have the opportunity for texting, for cell phones, for Skyping, for emailing. You have a, many mm -hmm. more modalities. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you actually connect every day, but the invitation is always there. So it needs to be, I, I have a, a personal question about this because in our family there's geography mm -hmm. and a great deal mm -hmm. of geography in between. So is that enough to simply, for the invitation to be out there, does it need to be sent every single day? How do you know what to do where you're not driving them crazy but they still know that you love and care? Well, every kid's different. Okay. Slow parenting teens doesn't give you a one size fits all, right? So you have every kid's different, every parent's different, everyone has their own comfort levels, you work it out. Mm -hmm. But because you're being curious about who they are and you're respecting their personality and you're catching them doing it right and you're listening really carefully, you'll know. And, you know, if you have a if you're working on this open relationship, it could be, you know, mom, 
bad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> off, bad, <laughs> off. I know, I know. <laughs> and and uh, we have kids in college, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're really busy. Mm -hmm. Other times, um, you know, something comes up, and I want to talk to them every day for my own purposes. And, you know, is that okay? Yeah, Mom, it's okay. But, ha you know, if you only parent in crisis, which is sort of the other side yes. of parenting every day, if you only parent in crisis, then your teenager only gets your attention when there's a crisis. Mm. So guess mm. what? You're going to have a crisis. Yeah, they'll, it'll be manufactured. There'll be a lot of crises. <laughs> so mm. it, it's got a, a sort of a, a common sense quality to it. But also, if you only parent in crisis, you don't have the opportunity to sit down and relax and enjoy each other. Usually in a crisis, decisions have to be made quickly and you don't have the mm -hmm. opportunity to really feel things out. Now, if you haven't had an everyday relationship mm -hmm. um, and you start trying to reach out every day, you are likely to be rebuffed at first. And that leads right. to, you know, the don't take it personally. We talked about this earlier. Yeah. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't take it personally. <laughs> Understand that not every invitation is going to be picked up. Right. And maybe mm -hmm. not the first eight will be picked up. But put them out there. Put them out there. Know that your door's open. And what we've talked a little bit about, you know, when you want to change the relationship, it's you that has to change. And when you get yourself to a position where you're willing to genuinely open yourself up and be available to your teenager every day, that's yes. a huge change in you. And with that change, mm -hmm. you'll be willing to be patient. You'll be willing to wait. That's what I meant by the hope in this book because there, um, prior to reading this, I really thought, okay, you know, I blew it. There are things that I'm not going to get a do over on, and you can't change anybody else, so I'm stuck. But you showed me that I can change me, and and it's in it a way that um, I can embrace because you don't make me wrong. You don't make any parent wrong. No. You just say there's another way to think about this, another way to do it. And I've invited both Molly and Marty to be back because there is so much information to cover here, folks. There's so much good <laughs> stuff to come from this. And they, you know, they're both highly degreed women. They I, each hold a master's degree. Um, far more impressive is that your kids are crazy about you and come to you <laughs> and this is yes. real life stuff. I'm not kidding. Yes. This is because it's easy to get a degree in something. Any of us <laughs> can go to school. This is this is real stuff in your home every day. Yes. And that means the world to me. So if you could give these folks at least we've got five minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, an idea of a little bit of slow parenting versus fast parenting. And then we're going to talk about the seminar that you're going to have on May 1st. May 1st, that's Wednesday, yes? Mm -hmm. What yes. time? 6.30 to 8.30. And it will be where? At 9.50 East Cimarron in Colorado Springs. Great. It's at the uh, Colorado Springs Quaker Meeting House. Outstanding. And we will make sure that we put all that information on the mm -hmm. screen as mm, well. Thank you. So thank you for holding the seminars and we will be seeing more of you on Rocky Mountain Views. But Thank let's you. talk about, because there's so much to do with there, this. There's we can lot. do slow parenting at work. We can do slow parenting <laughs> in our marriage. We can do slow parenting in so many, th and we want to get specific with mm -hmm. you and learn mm -hmm. more about this. So again, many thanks for being here. Um, talk to me about a, a couple of examples of slow parenting versus fast parenting. Take a scenario. Pick what you would consider a typical problem that, that parents have with teenagers. Okay, your kid's breaking curfew and they've done it for the third time and you're tearing your hair out and you found yourself leveling threats and here you are. Okay. Ooh, threats. Yes. Very useful. We like threats. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you want to start fast parenting? Do you want me to be the fast parent? You, be the, you, the, you do the fast parenting version of this. Okay. So, are we going to do it as a dialogue? No. Just okay. give the version. All right. So, <coughs> the kid has broken curfew. Um, the fast parent lays down the law, grounds the kid, decides for how long, lays out all kinds of limitations about, you know, you're disrespecting our family, you're disrespecting me, you're inconveniencing me, you know, you're going to have to pay for this, you're not going to be able to go out, you know, with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you can't have the car, I'll take your cell phone. Um, 
the next time you do this, if you do this again, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> um, no, I'm yeah. not kidding. No, I'm yeah. calling sure the happen. cops. And if you get arrested, you're in jail. You can take care of it. That this is just wildly inconvenient and, uh, and unacceptable. And you're not learning. So there's the law. That seems like a pretty common occurrence. Yes. Okay, what's the slow parenting? Well, but if you notice, nowhere in that scenario did the, ch did the teenager say a word. <laughs> right. There's no, See, the there's no space for the teenager to speak. Right. So the slow parenting version would be something like, what happened? Well, so-and-so was at the party and they had too much to drink and I took their keys away from them and I needed to make sure that they got home and it da 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 and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Could be one version, could be a thousand other. I forgot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't care. I mean, it could be a <laughs> lot of different things. But the first thing a slow parent does is says, what's up? What happened? Why did this occur? Okay. And that Im immediately changes the entire scenario. Yeah. And so then you listen, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you listen with curiosity, and you listen to catch them doing it right. So let's just say whatever the reason was, then, the, then it becomes, wow, I, that was a really good judgment call. I'm very glad that you took your friend's keys away and made sure that they didn't drive home. I'm really pleased about that. Um, however, you didn't call me, and that's kind of our arrangement, so I've been waiting up and I've been worried. So what I'd like is, you know, our deal, which is I get your cell phone for 24 hours. And the, the kid says, okay, because <laughs> that is our arrangement and that is our deal, and here's my phone. And typically in my household, there's a hug good night, and you see them in the morning. And it's because all of that has been talked about in advance of crisis, yes. where if this happens, this is going to be the natural consequence. Yes. And yes. so there isn't right. any surprise and there's no negotiating over a consequence. Right, now, now that's the after slow parenting for years. Okay. I mean, that's, we're not guaranteeing that if you, if you say to your teenager who's late for the third time on curfew, well, what happened, honey? <laughs> that it's not, that, <laughs> no, that, that, you're not, not gonna, that it's not gonna play out that way. But what I think the, the emphasis that I wanna make in terms of what's the difference Yes. is the difference is that in fast parenting you're you're talking at them and you're judging them and you're judging them and you're th literally putting the relationship at risk i get that i hear it i know we're going to need to talk about that much much more when we talk about specifically for teens and some difficult issues yes. and we are going yes, to do yes, that yeah. yes when you have your seminar that's happening on the Wh first what is that going to be well the theme of it is how to listen so your teen will talk. So we're taking one of the attitudes and working it over. So we're gonna talk about the attitude and we're going to teach a particular skill mm -hmm. and then you're gonna, then people who come are gonna practice that skill with other people who are trying to learn it. Fantastic. And then talk about applications in, uh, with teens at, at home. That's wonderful. So it's gonna be a, a nice, um, slow, if you wish, uh, look at one of the attitudes. Well, we have. Uh, we hope that we're going to be there with you. I can't Excellent. wait for it. We are going to have you here again with us, and I'm so grateful that you're willing to do that. Thank you for watching today, and uh, you'll see us here again soon. Have a good day.